Hi, this is episode four of Lo-Fi Let's Plays with Lee Alexander. A few people have asked me lately, why the lo-fi? Is it just because you don't want to edit audio? And I say, well, everyone, yes, in fact, that's true. Um, I don't really have a lot of uh, technical skills in terms of putting together a polished production. But even if I did, I don't know if I'd want to. Part of the goal of this series is to show the role that games can play in daily life and memory. And that means that you might hear the background noise of wherever I am. Um, currently, I'm in New York City, staying with a friend before I go back to London next week. You might hear my friend walk in and have this video interrupted by something going on in the background of my life. That's kind of important to me, um, because the gaming memories that we have and we treasure didn't take place in a guided vacuum. They didn't pl take place in the sort of tidy media hollows of product culture. Um, for a lot of us, our gaming lives are separate than our real lives. You know, we go to our jobs and we hang out with our friends, and then we come home and we play and we read about video games. But that's actually not an accurate depiction of our experience of games. Um, they're a part of our lives. They have background noise. They have your friends butting in. They have your mother trying to vacuum over your controller cords, if you were like me as a child. Speaking of my childhood, we're doing another Let's Play of a game at virtualapple.org, and today by popular request. Um, not that I'm going to be re taking requests too often, only sometimes. Uh, but today we're revisiting the Dark Crystal game, made by Sierra Online. In fact, um, an early Sierra game, a high-res adventure, so to speak. Um, and as you know, this particular Sierra game was made about the... Uh, popular uh, Lucasfilm game, if I'm not mistaken, uh, The Dark Crystal, and it had a lot of Jim Henson's masterfully crafted and creepy uh, puppet characters involved. Um, I could just have completely pulled all of that out of my ass. We're live. It's lo-fi. Google whoever made The Dark Crystal movie and make sure I'm right. And uh, if I'm not, feel free to flame me, or don't, because that would make you a jerk. Um, but thanks for coming along today. It is uh, Thursday afternoon in New York City, and uh, I can hear the sound of the traffic below me. It's interesting, because when you travel often, and you end up in a city, you start to feel like you might really kind of be a grown-up. You know, if you've never really missed a flight, and if you manage to successfully go from one place to another using the high-tech infrastructure of public transit, you don't lose your ID. You print out your ticket on time. You check your luggage and it's there when you get there. You're doing it right. You're an adult. When you're a child, though, you know, those infrastructures seem far away and impossible and hard to attain. That's why fantasy is helpful. Um, when I was a child watching The Dark Crystal, I liked to imagine that there was a world where technology wasn't a factor where fitting in in school wasn't a factor. Um, the Dark Crystal is the movie about, uh, it's a sort of elf race called the Gelflings, and this, uh, this young man you can see sitting here on this mountainside or at the base of a pool, it's kind of hard to tell with these graphics, but he's the last of his kind. He's a Gelfling, and the premise of the movie is that uh, he's prophesied as the last of his kind with bringing a shard of the mysterious magical crystal to the uh, central location of the crystal and repairing the titular crystal in order to restore peace to a divided land. That's basically the premise of the game as well. Um, last week we played Dallas Quest and we found that the computer game Dallas Quest doesn't really meaningfully follow any familiar plots from the Dallas soap opera television show. This game is actually remarkably faithful um, to the spirit and to the level of detail uh, of the films and uh, it's hard for me to play this game with all of its highly detailed graphics and its beautiful evocative illustrations and not think back to when I was a kid watching the movie and how atmospheric it was. Um, so thanks for sitting through that long intro. Here we are at the Valley of the Stones. We're playing the role of the Gelfling Jen. Um, we're in a beautiful mountain valley. The mystics have a special name for it, the Valley of the Stones. One thing you're going to notice that's special about this game is uh, that it includes and contains a lot of uh, scripted events that sort of feel random. Let's find out. Uh, as we type in, look, before we can even do anything, someone arrives. It is a uh, great and almost cow-like uh, two, four, six-legged creature, a mystic. Um, a mystic approaches and says, Ursu, wisest of, our race, ri wisest of our race, is dying. He has sent for you. Come quickly. Then the mystic walks away. That's actually a 
interesting type of exposition because we don't understand yet that Jen lives with the mystics, which is something you'd know if you watched the movie, that he's closely acquainted with the mystic race and they've raised him. Uh, you don't know that Ursu is Jen's uh, master, so to speak, um, that, that he is Jen's mentor. And we don't know, uh, according to the mystic, where Ursu lies dying. So the interesting part about the exposition of this game is I could start wandering right now and picking things up and looking around the world of this game, but unless I know how to get to Ursu in fairly efficient time, he's going to die before I can greet him. And uh, there's no way to undo that. So you'd actually have to play this game many, many times to know your path to the Cave of the Mystics uh, in order to find Ursu before he dies, but luckily I know how to get there, so I'm going to bring you Look at this beautiful graphic right here with the ring of standing stones and all the long shadows pointing in one direction. I always wondered as a child, are, are they signifying that I meant to be going north? I'm not sure. Jen is in the Valley of the Stones, so named for the circular formations of standing stones that lie within it. What's interesting is before I played this game for the first time, I, um, you know, when I played this game for the first time, it was before I'd actually seen the film of the same name. So I have this uh, long-haired protagonist, uh, this elf character named Jen, and I assumed that I was playing as a woman. Um, but in fact, that's not the case. Jen is a, a male gelfling. Um, that's kind of a plot point in The Dark Crystal because, of course, he meets a, a, a female gelfling eventually uh, in the story. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting what you as a child can project on the people you're playing as. I, I thought this was kind of an interesting androgynous woman adventurer, but canonically it's not. It can be, however whatever you'd like it to be today, because um, this is our space, and this is our time every Thursday that I'm going to try to make for you and I, no matter what happens. Jen is in the Valley of the Stones. Towering above him to the west is a steep cliff. A cave opening beckons from the side of the cliff. If you've been following along the Let's Plays so far, you'd know that many of them are actually pretty finicky uh, about directions, and as such, they can be pretty literal in the pictures that they show you and, and showing you what available directions there are and what items are visible. But this game is a little bit more uh, organic relative to that, so since we've been moving west and there's a door opening directly to our left, we can assume that by continuing west we'll enter uh, this cave. Um, and honestly, I think that this game, in terms of the art, is relatively unprecedented. Already you've seen the beautiful play of sunset and shadows as, as we're going to meet our dying master. We see ourselves silhouetted in the mouth of the cave. Um, in the previous adventure games we've played, we actually don't see ourselves at all. Uh, this is the first time where uh, the character we're playing actually appears on screen in this series so far, and I suppose that's relevant because Jen is the protagonist of the film, and anyone who plays the film, it wouldn't be enough, uh, you know, anyone who plays this game, it wouldn't be enough for them to simply assume that we're Jen. Um, we're going to want to see him. So Jen is slowly walking within a dimly lit cave. The passage winds to the north and to the east. Well, we've come from the west, so let's continue north. And we reach the bedchamber, slowly drawn into reality here, of Ursu, wisest of the mystics, lying on a stone beside a gazing pool. And there's Jen, our sort of elf-like hero, regarding his master as he dies. Beside him on the floor is a bowl of liquid. And before anything even happens, enter command. We could look at the liquid. We could look at Ursu. Let's, let's examine Ursu. And, you know, in response to our action, Ursu is dying. That's the only thing it tells us. Let's, let's speak to him. There has to be a reason that we came. Ursu sighs and says, At the time of the last conjunction or coming together of our world's three sons, the evil Skeksis gained control over the great crystal that rules our destiny. The crystal cracked and darkened, and dark it will remain until a piece that broke off, the crystal shard, is restored. There is a prophecy that only the sh that the shard can be replaced only by Gelfling hand, and only at the time of the next great conjunction. If this prophecy is not fulfilled, the Skeksis will grow even more powerful, and their reign will last forever. Jen, to you has fallen the task of healing the crystal, and it is time for your quest to begin, for very soon the three sons will once again be joined in a great conjunction. You must find Agra, keeper of secrets and watcher of the heavens. She may have the shard you seek. So we're given the premise of our role as the hero in this game, you know, whether you've seen the movie or not. You have to actually encounter your mentor and watch him die in order to receive the premise. That's already a little bit, um, a little bit obscure, a little bit elegant for an old adventure game. I'm very fond of this one, um, especially given that it's a licensed tie-in. Hopefully we'll get some time to kind of make some progress, uh, with it today. 
Uh, so, Gelfling, I leave you with this final puzzle. What do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? Find the answer to this mystery and present it to Agra. Only then can you gain entrance to her observatory. And now, Gelfling, our roads must curve apart. And this, actually, I happen to know is a direct quote from the movie. We may meet in another life, but not again in this one. With these words, Ursu dies, and his lifeless body vanishes from the sleep frame. I think it does a very good job uh, presenting an established universe for us without being heavy-handed about it, without being like, you've seen the movie, therefore you know. Jen is in a large cavern. Look, liquid. And ah, we see an image of a shard is conjured. When I was a child, I didn't understand that that wasn't the shard itself. I said, well, this quest is easy. You can just see it right there. But no, that's not the shard. Can't do that here. So why don't we explore the world of the Dark Crystal here and uh, and try to show you what a beautiful, beautiful environment this is. Um, a lot of people are skeptical that these old hand-drawn Apple games can be beautiful, but to me this is actually, you know, one of the exemplars thereof. Um, can we go north yet? A sheer cliff stands in Jen's way. We continue onward. Uh, let's follow the direction of the standing stones. Um, oh, actually, no, you know what? I'm actually, uh, you're uh, penalized on this less Let's Play by the fact that I know a little bit about this one after having played it a bunch. Look at us wandering in the mountains. Look at those narrow, slanting beams of light. The mountainside is covered with loose and extremely sharp shale. It's good that I know this, though, because you can uh, fall down from the mountains before you're able to see all the bits of the peaks that you need to uh, witness in this valley. But in general, the mountains are behind us. So let's continue the other direction. Uh, try to head further down to a lower ground. Let's move toward that tree. All of the shadows are sort of calling us in that direction. Um, yeah, this is one of the most, most beautiful games in my memory. Um, I wonder if that sounds silly to you right now. I hope it doesn't. Um, a shadowy path that snakes through the hills. Let's continue north. We fall head over heels down a, a steep slope, and we find ourselves in a mysterious place, surrounded by tangled vines, chattering blossoms, and wary creatures. I remember this parser being especially sensitive to the things that I wanted to look at in the environment. Jen notices many new and unusual creatures listen blossoms. Let's listen to their chattering. Jen listens to the f chattering flowers, but with all them all talking at once, he can't understand what they're saying. Jen is in the wilderness. Where shall we go? Here we are. More creatures. It's quieter here. Let's try listening to the flowers again. Oh, no. I guess not. They're all chattering at once. They can't hear what we're saying. Let's continue to explore this area and see what kind of directional options are available to us. In my memory, this map is vast and, and very difficult to traverse, so let's see what we can come up with. Aha! Uh -huh. Jen is alone in the wilderness. Happily, there is a beautiful pond, sparkling like a gem among the chattering flowers, to brighten up Jen's loneliness. I like it's interesting that we establish, uh, both in the text and in the imagery, that we're a lonely person. Our master has died. Everywhere we go, you know, we see, you know, we see ourselves sort of standing silhouetted alongside trees or, or facing mysterious creatures. Um, look, to, look at the frog. No, we can't speak to the frog, can we? This is the Dark Crystal, not Dr. Doolittle. Listen, creatures. Oops. Nope, not listen, Sarah. Nope. <laughs> Five Let's Plays, everybody. Jen notices nothing unusual. Take lily pad. The water lilies have very thick stems. Try as he might, Jen cannot tear one of the pads loose. Using the sharp shale, Jen cuts the lily pad away from its thick stem and takes it with him. So we might, uh, we might like to have that later, ideally. Aha. Uh -huh. There's a babbling brook splashing through the wilderness here. Chattering flowers and tall grasses line its bank. Let's listen to the brook. Jen listens carefully to the babbling brook. The brook, which seems to have a slight stutter, says E-E-E-N-N. 
N N N E N. Is it stuttering or is it giving us directions? That's an interesting thing to uh, remember for later. If you're playing along at home, please feel free to draw a map for me. In fact, I'd like it if you did. If there was some way you could draw a map sort of based only on watching this foray, and if you emailed it to me, I would publish it on my website. But uh, let's take some of these pebbles that I happen to know are here. Okay. Um, what happens if you talk to the brook? Yep, it still gives you these uh, directions. Shall we continue alongside the water and see what else there might be for us to find? Just vast forests and forests in this game. Um, Dark Crystal is fundamentally a journey film uh, about you know the boy leaves home and finds himself along the way. He exits his comfort zone and discovers his true power. Um, in that respect, it's a quintessential uh, RPG story. And uh, I think to reflect that, this computer game has a vast map and a lot of distinct artwork and uh, a bunch of different areas that uh, you know just simply simply sort of emphasize uh, the loneliness and the ease of getting lost. Um, let's see what's to the north. There is a sling. Awesome. So we can use that for a weapon, potentially. Jen is making his way through a serene forest of towering plants. Let's take the sling. And perhaps we've missed something to the west, so let's double back. When I was a child, I used to play Dark Crystal out of doors, and, uh, it was, uh, my play was largely influenced by the, the imagery of this game, you know, the description of the sweet breath of trees, or the chattering flowers, or the lonesome forests, a virgin forest of gnarled trees and vine-like creepers. What's to the west? We're just kind of exploring this place in layers. Apparently things are nice here. Jen is in a cool forest under a canopy of twisted trees. The air here is filled with an enticing scent. Jen climbs the nearest tree, seems nothing, sees nothing special, and returns to the forest. You know, you can always climb trees in just about any game. Or at least the game will account for your desire to climb by telling you what happens if you climb or telling you that you can't climb. But I guarantee you that the one tree that you assume you can't climb, you can. It's one of the laws of adventure games, isn't it? And look, it, it appears we're sitting in a tree right now. A thickly wooded forest where vine-like creepers hang everywhere. Cut vine, maybe. Jen can never sever no vine before it's time. That's a bit of a pun. When I try to go west, it asks me to insert uh, uh, another disc. So uh, hopefully this is the way to do it. Uh, oh wait, that's what side would be. Let's try mounting this disc. Sorry, the uh, disc switching doesn't always translate really well in ports, so it can take a little bit of fumbling, but looks like we've got it right this time. Wow, where are we? An arid brushland. There are scrubby brushes and crooked little trees everywhere. Yeah, again, this game is full of great lonely spaces. We come to the edge of a deep, dark chasm. To the west beyond the chasm, he can see a forbidding desert stretching to the horizon. Let's see if we can follow along the chasm to the north as we've, we've been heading in this direction. A vast, barren desert is, is the other way. So we've kind of envisaged ourselves walking on a grid. Again, look at this. Look at this artwork. We notice the depth of the chasm and the shadow that Jen casts along this forbidding place. A harsh desert wind stings his face. It doesn't actually even make the opposite side of the chasm desirable. Uh, let's, let's try to head away from the brushland where uh, tiny creatures are everywhere. Can't go in that direction continue to follow this arid brushland, scrubby vegetation. We're told a uh, hot, dry wind is coming from the west. But uh, I wonder if there's any value to this desert right now, um, besides being told that there is a desert. Uh, we change the disc again. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, this one is kind of a meditative experience for me. What are your memories of the Dark Crystal film? Um, I remember Agra, and I remember meeting Kira. And I remember the mystics and the Skeksis, who were sort of polar opposites of each other. Okay. Really, uh, taking it seriously when I cross this border. Interesting to understand that the game sort of has that invisible wall, uh, after which you need to change the disc. Wow. Jen is on the hill of the Landstriders. Two long-legged beasts are gazing here. Do you remember the Landstriders from the film? They took you to the tower before. Let's see if that's the case now. The Landstriders. 
keep their distance and won't let Jen approach them. Wow. So we're seeing as we, we're changing discs often as we sojourn through this mysterious and lonesome land. It is pretty lonesome, isn't it? The idea of, of being an androgyne who's the last of your kind, you know, for me as a young girl. I don't know, I found this poignant. Maybe you can understand me a little bit when I tell you that I very much wanted to live in this world, even before I ever saw the movie. That, that quintessential RPG story is pretty interesting. Um, you know, that you, you leave home, you venture forth, and you find that the land very close to you holds secrets about who you really are, and about whether there are really other people like you out there in the universe. That's an interesting mystery, is it? Let's, let's visit these ruins before we call it a day for this week's Let's Play. Jen has wandered into the ruins of what appears to have been a Gelfling village. It's the seat of our people, everyone. He is standing in front of a large wall. Nearby are two flat stones. Look, wall. Let's see what that says. Jen notices nothing unusual. Don't ask me why I remember this. A momentary tremor shakes the ruins, and the wall emits a mysterious rumbling sound. So as soon as we seat ourselves on these ruins, we notice that there's a, an image written on the back wall. We can see something that looks like a winged woman, a shard, a castle. A triangle, perhaps, pertaining to the, the Great Conjunction, and uh, something that looks like a pan. Excuse me. Enter command. There are some unusual hieroglyphics on the wall. Included in the hieroglyphics are pictographs of a two-pronged flute, a crystal shard, a female gelfling, and a castle. Also among the symbols on the wall is a drawing of a triangle inscribed within a circle. I wonder if here, amid these hieroglyphics, lies the answer to Ursu's question about the Sun Brothers, and whether by studying these hieroglyphics we could divine an answer to give to Agra. Um, the lily pad that I stole will help us cross a swamp to meet Agra. But um, you'll have to go to virtualapple.org and figure yourself, figure that one out uh, for yourself. We're out of time today, actually. We've gone over in terms of the Let's Plays. Interestingly, I feel like we haven't accomplished, accomplished as much in this Let's Play as we do with other games, but maybe inhabiting this lonesome and nostalgic place is enough. We've reached the hieroglyphics that perhaps hold the answer to our destiny and our heritage, and uh, I'm not any good at any better at interpreting them at, at, than Jen is. So um, I'd like to see if maybe you folks watching along could uh, go to virtualapple.org and look in the Apple II section at the Dark Crystal and see what you can define about this world. And please feel free to write in lee at leealexander.net and share your memories of the Dark Crystal and uh, whether it influenced your play and your sense of the world as a child. I think that this uh, hero's arc uh, of the role-playing game where you leave home, discover the world, learn about yourself, and confront destiny, confront forces greater than yourself, is something that's been important to video games for such a long time, and, and for me it was deeply formative as a child, and, and maybe it was for you too. Thank you for watching this week's Lo-Fi Let's Play. Um, you can watch previous installments on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, you can go to leealexander.net, uh, where we publish uh, occasional letters. I uh, actually got a letter from someone who uh, was employed by Datasoft at the time they published Alice Quest, so if you're just hearing this now, go and check that out at my website. And uh, share your memories and requests uh, with me via Twitter at leealexander or uh, via email at leealexander.net. Thanks for coming along. Uh, Every Thursday is our space and time uh, in the gentle world of the past. Have a pleasant weekend, everybody. Take care.